Hello my dear students, this is Dr. Anima Upadhyay and on your special request, I am uploading this video. I got this request just a couple of hours back and now I am here uploading the video on the determination of Mohar salt using standard potassium dichromate solution. I am playing my role. Now it is your end that you should subscribe my channel and also share and like my videos. I want all of you to share the videos among all your friends so that the videos can reach to the most deserving students who are looking for some good teachers who can tell them at the 11th hour also and help them. Now let us begin with this video of determination of Mohar salt using standard potassium dichromate solution. What is Mohar salt? Mohar salt is Paris ammonium sulfate hexahydrate and its formula is FeSO4, NH4 twice SO4, 6 H2O. What type of salt is Mohar salt? It is a double salt. What is a double salt? A double salt is one which is prepared by the crystallization of equimolar concentrations of two simple salts. And on dissolution of this double salt in water, it dissociates into respective anions and cations of the simple salt. What happens when Mohar salt is dissolved in water? When Mohar salt is dissolved in water, it produces ferrous ions, ammonium ions and sulfate ions. When you are preparing a solution of Mohar salt, why do you add dilute sulfuric acid to it? Dilute sulfuric acid is added in the preparation of a solution of Mohar salt in water because sulfuric acid prevents the hydrolysis of the salt. If you skip the addition of dilute sulfuric acid in the preparation of Mohar salt, how you will come to know that the salt has undergone hydrolysis? If dilute sulfuric acid is not added at the time of preparation of an aqueous solution of Mohar salt, the solution will turn to pale yellow color and it will not be transparent also. This will indicate that the salt has undergone hydrolysis. What happens? when Mohar salt is titrated against potassium dichromate solution. And what type of titration is this? This is a redox titration. The ferrous ion which is present in the Mohar salt undergoes oxidation. And potassium dichromate solution is a strong oxidizing agent in the acidic medium. So dichromate ions undergoes reduction. It's a redox titration I have already told you. What is the indicator employed in this titration? N-phenyl anthranilic acid is employed as the indicator. What is the change in color at the end point? At the end point the color changes from green to purple. Why the color is green before the end point? Before the end point, the color is green because of the formation of chromate ions in the solution. The dichromate ions gets reduced to chromate ions while oxidizing the ferrous iron into ferric iron. And it is the color of the chromate ions which is green and therefore the color of the solution is green before the end point. Why the color
color changes to purple at the end point. At the end point, there is no ferrous iron left in the solution. So, any extra drop of potassium dichromate solution now oxidizes the indicator that is the N-phenyl anthranilic acid. And the oxidized state of the indicator is purple in color. What is the form of indicator in the oxidized state? In the oxidized state, the indicator is in quinoid form, which shows purple color. What is the unoxidized state of the indicator? The unoxidized state of the indicator is in the benzenoid form, which is colorless. What happens to the molecular weight and equivalent weight of potassium dichromate in the acidic medium. In the acidic medium, the equivalent weight of potassium dichromate is one-sixth of its molecular weight. Why it is one-sixth of its molecular weight in acidic medium? In acidic medium, the dichromate ions gets reduced to chromate ions. And during this process, it gains six electrons. So this is the reason the equivalent weight of potassium dichromate is one-sixth of its molecular weight. Why the molecular weight and equivalent weight of ferrous ammonium sulfate is same? It is same because ferrous iron gets oxidized to ferric iron and in this process, it loses only one electron. Therefore, the molecular weight and equivalent weight for Mohr salt is same. Is there a need of adding dilute sulfuric acid while doing the titration? Yes, while doing the titration, dilute sulfuric acid is added to the aliquot of Mohr salt solution so that the solution should become acidic. As in the acidic medium only, the dichromate solution acts as a strong oxidizing agent. What are the other redox indicators? Can you name a few? Yes, diphenylamine, diphenylbenzidine, diphenylamine sulfonate are some indicators that can be employed for doing the redox titrations and their color also changes from green to violet. Do we add phosphoric acid also in determination of more salt using standard potassium dichromate solution? It is not mandatory, but we can use phosphoric acid to get a sharp end point. How do you get a sharp end point using phosphoric acid? The phosphoric acid stabilizes the standard reduction potential of ferric ferrous couple. Also, it prevents the premature oxidation of the indicator that is N-phenyl anthranilic acid. I have already told you that this is a redox titration and that ferrous ammonium sulfate is a primary standard salt. So can you tell the procedure of this titration? When we are performing this titration, the standard solution of potassium dichromate is prepared in water and it is filled in the burette. The test solution that is the Mohr salt solution is given to us which is prepared in dilute sulfuric acid to prevent the hydrolysis. 25 ml of it is pipetted out to this solution. 10 ml of 5 normal sulfuric acid is added to acidify it. A few drops of N-phenyl anthranilic acid indicator is added and it is titrated against the potassium dichromate solution. Using the formula N1V1 is equal to N2V2, we can calculate the normality of the ferrous ammonium sulfate solution. And 
Multiplying the normality with the equivalent weight, we can get the strength of the ferrous ammonium sulfate in grams per liter. So when the phosphoric acid is, is added, the phosphoric acid is added after the addition of sulfuric acid. If we want to get a sharp end point using phosphoric acid. But we, as I said, we can do the titration without, sulfuric, without phosphoric acid also. Can we use nitric acid or hydrochloric acid also in the titration? No, nitric acid and hydrochloric acid should not be added because nitric acid is a strong oxidizing agent itself. And the chloride present, present in the hydrochloric acid also is an oxidizing agent and it liberates chlorine gas. Yes. Therefore, we should not use nitric acid and hydrochloric acid in this titration. We should only use sulfuric acid. I think I have dealt with almost all the possible Vibhavos equations. Do well in the exam. All the very best to you all. My best wishes. Take care of yourself and bye-bye.